in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. For he is the merciful lamb that was slain for you to take away your sin. It's what Jesus accomplished at the cross for you. It's what he accomplished by the shedding of his blood. Hi, I'm Pastor Victoria Ferry. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. We've been teaching out of the book of Galatians and the book of Romans. We've been teaching about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the life of Christ. We're going to continue teaching about the Holy Spirit and opening the scriptures and giving you wisdom and understanding. So I'd like to uh, pray for you today. Father, I thank you for the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We honor your presence upon this program, Lord. Touch and heal people today, Lord. Open the eyes of their heart to the truth that is in you, Lord. In Jesus' name. The last time we taught, we were in the book of Galatians and the book of Romans. So I'm going to go back to where we left off. We're going to go to Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now the law of sin and death was holding you guilty. That was the law of Moses. And we learned that you're not justified by the law of Moses. The law of Moses could not impart righteousness. The law was holy. It was God's law given to Moses. But it was our schoolmaster, we learned in the book of Galatians, that brings us on to Christ. Christ was perfect. He kept the law perfectly. He answered the law. According to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, that he came not to destroy the law. This is Jesus' words. He came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law and the prophets. We'll just go over there and look at these scriptures. It's very important to know and to understand the scriptures and what they are saying to you as a believer. So in Matthew chapter 5, it also states in verse 18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot and one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Jesus was born under the law. The fullness of time was come. We learned that in Galatians 4.4. 4. God sending forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law. No one that was created by God can save their soul. God put that law into the earth, was given to Moses, to the children of Israel. And the first commandment, Thou shalt have no other gods before thee. I am the Lord thy God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. We'll go back to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. It gives the commandments of God. It's so important to teach these to your children. When they rise up in the morning, throughout the day, and when they go to bed at night. We are to teach God's word to our children.
It says in Exodus chapter 1, verse 4, Thou shalt make unto, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God. Am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So he shows mercy to those that love him and keep his commandments. For his commandment is holy. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Verse 7, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. So when you say his name in an irreverent manner, you are held guilty by God and you will stand before God on judgment day if you're a non-believer and you never forsake your sin and turn to Christ, you will be held guilty by taking his name in vain. Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The Sabbath day was given by God for man to honor him on the Sabbath day. To bring your tithe and offerings unto the Lord. To honor the Lord. To reverence Him. To fear Him. That His name be glorified in your life. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath. Of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and he hallowed it. It was a holy day. Verse 12, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpets and the mountains smoking when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you and that his fear may be before your faces, that you sin not. So the law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ. The law is holy and perfect. But the law could not impart righteousness because there's no one that could keep the law. 
If you broke one commandment, you were guilty of all. If you go to Romans chapter 10, Apostle Paul, who was from the tribe of Benjamin, and he was a Pharisee before he got converted on the road of Damascus, and Jesus himself appeared to him and said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he said, what, Lord, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord gave him instructions. He was blinded for three days. Then Ananias, a disciple of the Lord, was instructed by the Lord to go to Saul of Tarsus. And he spoke to him and told him that he was going to be a chosen vessel to bear my name to the Gentile nations and to kings and to the children of Israel. And he will suffer many things for my sake. And Saul became was converted when Ananias laid hands on him. The scales on his eyes came off and he, Saul did not eat for about three days. And he got filled with the Holy Ghost on the road to Damascus. He was persecuting Christians, hauling them to prison. And he was there watching at the death of Stephen, who was a deacon in the church he had mighty miracles in his ministry, and he was, Stephen was a part of the apostolic ministry with the apostles. And the very one that was persecuting and making havoc of the church in Jerusalem, causing many to be dispersed, but the apostles were steadfast in preaching the gospel, and so was the disciples. And then Saul was converted on that road to Damascus. He was going one direction with great persecution, hauling men and women into prison and letters in his hands to take men and women. And then he's converted on that road of Damascus. And he goes the other direction preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified and the power of his resurrection. Apostle Paul received wisdom and revelation, knowledge of the Son of God and wrote the epistles and wrote the book of Romans. And he was inspired by the spirit of wisdom and revelation of Jesus Christ. And he spoke here in chapter 10 of Romans, and he said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. That they might be saved. The law couldn't save you. It always showed you that you were guilty. If you broke one commandment, you were guilty of all. And it could not impart righteousness to you. Verse 2, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. There's a lot of people that have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. He's the end of the law. Why? He represented you. He represented me. He was your representative man, the son of man. To fulfill the law and the prophets, 
what the law and the prophets were all pointing to Christ. He came not to destroy the law and the prophets. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. By being our substitute, sin substitute at the cross, he fulfilled everything perfectly. It's not the burnt offerings that's pleasing to God. It's not all the sacrifices that was pleasing to God. There was only one sacrifice that was pleasing to the Father. is when he gave his son upon the cross of Calvary. When he gave his son upon the cross of Calvary, Jesus was fulfilling all righteousness requirements of the law, paying the penalty and the judgment for our iniquities and transgressions, redeeming you out from under the law that held you guilty. So the law is our schoolmaster that bring us onto Christ. No matter how hard you tried to keep the law, if you broke one, you're guilty of all. Jesus fulfilled that law because he was born under the law, born of a virgin. He kept the law perfectly. He was baptized at the River Jordan to fulfill all righteousness. He was anointed by his father at the River Jordan. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Well pleased because Jesus is going to fulfill all that the father sent him to do. Jesus, the Messiah, was here before Abraham. He was here before the world began. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, that he is the creator of all things. All things were created by him and for him. And without him was not anything made that was made. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He declares the end from the beginning. He was the one that spoke to Moses. He's the one that gave Moses the Ten Commandments. See, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And the Word was made flesh. God was made flesh. This is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, Seen of angels, preached to the Gentile nations. He came for the Jew and the Gentile nations. To the Jews, he's a stumbling block. To the Greeks, he's foolishness. That's why the preaching of the cross, to those that don't believe, it's foolishness. But to those that believe, it's the power of God unto salvation. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. It's in Jesus Christ and him alone. The Bible says, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For your heart is believing unto righteousness. Why? The law cannot impart righteousness. Jesus fulfilled the law and he imparts his righteousness because he shed his blood to justify you in his own blood. He's a justifier of the unjust. The Bible says we were all under sin. We were all uh, unjust. He was the only just and holy one. the Holy One of Israel. He's our King. He was born a King. He gave His life. It says, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Now He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's at the right hand of the Father. And 
He said, if I don't go away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I go away, I will send him unto you. So Jesus is the one that baptizes you in the Holy Ghost. I want to bring this up in Romans chapter 8, verse 3. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an enemy against God, for it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. See, we become a child of God, the Bible says, by faith in Christ Jesus. He takes you out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. You pass from death unto life. He brings you into newness of life. He puts a new nature inside you, a, a new heart. He breathes his spirit inside of you. You become born again, born of the incorruptible word of God that lives and abides forever. Jesus said, except ye be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom of Almighty God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. He also said, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let's look into those scriptures. We'll go to John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. He that doeth the truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest that they are wrought in God. See, no one can come to the Father except the Spirit of God draw him. When the Spirit of God draws them, the grace of God is showing that individual that's not saved that they are lost. There is no one that can save their soul. That person can't save themselves. They're in need of a redeemer, a savior. 
because their mind has been blinded by the devil. Their heart has been blinded because of sin. Jesus can break that yoke of bondage of sin and corruption off of your life. He came to destroy that yoke, that heavy burden of sin, that heavy burden of sickness and disease, that heavy burden of infirmity in your flesh. He came to destroy that burden and to destroy that yoke off your neck and that yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is so powerful. It was powerful in Jesus' earthly ministry because when he spoke the word of God into situations in people's lives that had an ear to hear the word of God, there was an immediate performance of a miracle. Immediate performance of God. There was a great outcome of what he spoke. His word came with power and with authority. His word came with great wisdom and strength. And disease t departed from people's bodies. Demons came screaming out of people. The first time in synagogues, demons were being cast out of people. Because they said, we know who you are. You're the son of the most high God. The devil recognized it. People were possessed with demons. Jesus cast out devils. And he said, those that are true followers. He said, in my name, they will cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's the abundance of God's grace. That's the gift of God. This is a new day for those watching to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And we are going to continue next month teaching the Word of God. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB-TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.